welcome to today's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Your channel for super easy, no nonsense advice on how to declutter and organize your home. Please welcome your hosts, professional organizers, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners to episode 59 of the Declutter Hub podcast. I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you have clutter and want to sort it out, this is the show for you as well as the free resources on our declutterhub.com website, like the podcast, checklists, and guest blogs. We also have an exclusive area where we guide our members step-by-step to declutter their homes. We realize this can be very overwhelming, so we're there every step of the way with courses, live Q&As, and a community discussion. Take a look on members.declutterhub.com. This weekend, it is Remembrance Sunday, Remembrance Day, sometimes known informally as Poppy Day, owing to the tradition of the Remembrance Poppy, is a memorial day observed in the Commonwealth member states since the end of the First World War to remember the members of their armed forces who have died in the line of duty. So in today's episode, Leslie and I will be talking about medals and trophies and how to make decisions on what to keep, how to store them, and what to do if you no longer want them. So, Leslie, what does Remembrance Sunday mean to you? Well, I don't have anybody who served in any of the wars in my family at the moment, but we do make a special trip every Remembrance Sunday within our little town centre here in Sale. All the scouts and the guides and stuff do parades and they put down poppy wreaths and things. But it's so, so important for us as younger people who haven't had to do that kind of thing in world wars to just think back and think what people did for us. Yes, absolutely. And it's interesting because we don't have a Remembrance Sunday in the Netherlands where I come from. We celebrate our Day of Freedom on the 5th of May. So we remember all those who have fallen on the 4th of May. So when I came here, I was like, oh, there's nothing going on on the 4th of May. Oh, okay. So when do you do this then? And it was like, oh, it's Remembrance Sunday and it's in November. And of course, my son is now in the, is in the Scouts and he's been a beaver and he's been He's been in the Scouts for for a long time. So we go every year now. They have a lovely celebration here in one of the woods in Bexley. And there's a little plaque of the founder of the First Welling Scouts who actually died in the the First World War in the battlefields in, in Belgium. And it's actually uh, really uh, touching that my son went to Ypres about half a year ago in Belgium. And he actually saw the, the plaque of the name of Raymond Storer on the wall in the Manning Gate. So Leslie, I think that makes a circle around us in it. I think it's so important to commemorate and to remember on Remembrance Sunday all that those that have fallen have done for us. So we're lucky, aren't we, when we go out and declutter houses, because whether that's someone from the wars that's still living and has got medals and trophies from that time, or whether it's something that's been passed down through generations, for me, it's always such a touching moment when you see something like that. But there is always a question mark over what kind of things do you do with these? Do you just leave them in a drawer? Do you try and pass them on somewhere? What do you actually do with them? Because they tend at the moment to just sit in drawers, don't they? So we just wanted to talk a little bit today about a couple of possibilities. You know what's right for you. And if you're happy to just keep it in a drawer and be reminded of that every time you open a drawer, that's absolutely fine. But there are some other options out there. And we just wanted to talk about that, didn't we? Yes, absolutely. And I think it's not only medals from from First or Second World Wars. I think it's also trophies that people... I mean, I have a trophy upstairs that I won at a dancing competition you know and I really that's a special moment I was really proud of that and I've kept it as well and it's it's somewhere high up on the shelves but it's on display so it's not only about medals but also trophies maybe from running or a sports competition or football or dancing or whatever you are are into all those medals and trophies or things from family members who have served that is what we're talking about this this podcast and and what do you do with this kind of stuff Now, we did a podcast about six months ago, didn't we, about children's memorabilia, but I don't know about you, but I kind of think it's slightly different, isn't it? So the trophies and medals and certificates that children get, they're not mainstream, that's not what I want to say, but they're more commonplace, aren't they, than things that we get 
as an adult. So as an adult, if we get a trophy or a medal, we've worked hard for it generally, haven't we? <laughs> because that's been a conscious decision. I'm not saying that the kids have not worked hard for it, not at all. That's not what I'm saying. But as an adult, it's a very different endeavor, isn't it, to run a marathon or to fight in a world war or to go into the Iron Man or whatever those things are called that I've never done <laughs> and never will do. Um, but it's a big deal because it's a real sense of achievement, isn't it, as an adult? So I've got a client who took up running in her late 50s and now she's running marathons and she's 62 or 63 or something like that. And she's doing so well and running has become such a huge part of her life. But she's probably got now in the past five years doing this, 25 or 30 running medals. So what do you do with those medals? I think the first thing is you need to decide if you want to keep them or not. Just because they gave them to you doesn't necessarily mean you need, mean you need to keep them. But on the other hand, like you said, because it's such an achievement, people are really happy about those achievements and they really would like to keep them. So there's lots of options besides stuffing them in a drawer and occasionally pulling them out. Yeah, definitely. Just just jumping back there to the psychology of things. I think it's really, really important to work out what that means to you now. So I remember in one of our, because quite regularly we do these little decluttering challenges, don't we, on our Facebook community or in our members area. And one of the things that I did was um, that people were quite horrified more than anybody else. My brother-in-law was completely horrified that I got rid of a running trophy. It was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It doesn't really bring me that much happiness now. I know that I did it. I know that I did a half marathon then, which I can't actually believe that I did do now, (laughs) but I did. But I've still got the medal. So I got a medal and a trophy. I don't need both. And so I was just trying to think of things to declutter. And that's something that came up. And so it's an interesting one because it is very much about how important it is to you. And I think it's really a lot about quality over quantity, isn't it? But for some people, the quantity of those medals is, impo- is important too. So it's not, it's not necessarily a quality over a quantity, but it is for me. Does that make sense? And so mm-hmm. it's a very, very personal journey in terms of medals, isn't it? And what you've, what you've got. This is not, you know, so a running medal is not the same as a war trophy. That's not what we're saying here. But we're saying that the, the, achie- the sense of achievement, albeit is different, obviously, than serving in a war, as an adult, you have a very strong sense of connection to those medals, don't you? And a psychological, sentimental attachment. So what do you do with them? Yeah, I think you're right. Whether it's a, a medal or a trophy from a sports event. I, I walked the, the Nijmeegse Vierdaagse, which is a four-day walking event, which is one of the, it's the biggest walking event in the world. And oh my goodness, you know, I, I, I trained for months to do it and I felt such an incredible sense of achievement by walking over that finish. I'm so proud of that. And that is, I think, still one of the highlights that my husband and I both have done. And I was a bit distraught because uh, women can either walk 30K or 40K a day and men walk either 40K or 50K. And because I hurt my foot a week before the event, I decided to not walk to 40k but walk to 30k so that meant I didn't get a medal but I know I did it and I am really really proud of that achievement and my friend actually made me a beautiful frame with all the roots on there and photos of me going over the finish and I treasure that it's in my loo I see it every day it's donkey's years ago but I'm so proud of that so it's such a, I think it's really a sentimental item to keep or, or to let go of, but it's, it's a, not an easy decision. It's not an easy decision at all. And that's why we're saying it's very much a personal journey because there's yeah. part of me when I was thinking specifically about that trophy that was like, every time I go out running, I remember that I ran a half marathon. So I don't need a physical reminder of that achievement. And so it, it's a really interesting one. So what do you do? Have I got running medals? Yes, I absolutely have. But does one need to keep them if your home's becoming overwhelmed with them, which is, I suppose, what we're talking about at the moment, Mm -hmm. or if you've not got space for them. So yeah, think about the psychology and think about what it means to you. You don't necessarily need to keep them. But for me, if you do keep them, there's something that that are so special that you need to do something special with them and not just leave them in a drawer. So there are some really cool ideas out there in terms of what you can do. And because there's quite cool things, Uh, you know, visually, aesthetically, they're quite cool things, aren't they? 
the way you can display them is so cool. Now I just did a little five minute search on Pinterest to see the kind of images that were coming up of things. And there are so many really cool things. People have got them threaded over loops and all hanging down. There's things you can incorporate them within frames. You know, it's hard to explain what that looks like visually. But when I went onto Pinterest, I thought if I had multiple medals and trophies like that, then I would absolutely do something like that. Because that is really cool, much more cool than one medal on its own in a drawer or a, a jumbled mess. So definitely, if you're going to keep them, try and do something really special with them. Yeah. I remember in one of my client's houses, her husband did the London Marathon and his certificate was framed and his photo and his medal was in there and a photo of him with his shirt on with his number. And I thought, oh, wow, that is fantastic. And what a great achievement and, and what a great way to, to show everybody how proud you are of, of being able to run the London Marathon. So there's so many cool ways to create a piece of artwork with your medals that if you don't want to keep them anymore in your, in your drawer and want to enjoy them, definitely have a look and see what the options are. It's like a really typical piece of toilet art, isn't it? And that sounds really... <laughs> It's the kind of things that people have in the downstairs loo, don't they? You know, that they want to be proud of. And it's it's the kind of typical thing that you see down there. And it's quite nice because people see it then. When you go to someone's house, you don't always see things. But when you're sat on a loo, you absolutely do, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Toilet, toilet art, let's call it that. Yeah. So uh, well, it's it, that's funny that you say that because indeed my th- my frame about my walking event is also in my toilet, and people always ask me about it. So exactly um, because you do, it's a time when you can sit and reflect and see something. That's yeah. A, that's this graphic kind of vision of people sitting on the loo looking <laughs> around at random pieces of artwork in people's <laughs> toilets. But you know what I mean, don't you? Like a lot of people do do things like that in toilets. Yeah. Anyway. We die. <laughs> Digress, Leslie. We digress. <laughs> so, okay. So those, there, there are fantastic options out there if you want to keep it besides stuffing it in a drawer. So what are other options then here? Right. Okay. So I suppose now we're jumping back to, so the kind of medals that we've been talking about are more kind of running medals and sporting achievements and that kind of thing. So if we jump back to what we first were talking about, which was the military medals and things like that, there's different options really with this. Now, there's a company out there that we're familiar with called Vintage Cash Cow that we worked with when we were on the Association of Professional Declutterers and Organizers. And they definitely trade in a very simple way vintage items, including medals and war memorabilia. It's an easy way of getting some money for something that you no longer want or need. So check out Vintage Cash Cow. Ingrid will put the link in the show notes. And there's probably something similar in the country where you're living. So maybe just uh, do a bit of a Google and do some research where you are and see if you can find some local who is willing to take it off your hands if you're considering selling any of these items. Because there, there surely is a market for, for items like that. Definitely. So antique shops, you know, they, they use them in films, don't they? There's loads of different places that they use them and you just never quite know. So just, you know, we're so lucky these days. We can just Google things, can't we? Just say, selling my military medals and you'll find a million things close to you. So we've got all that information on our fingertips. If it's something that you feel that you no longer want that doesn't have sentimental value to you, then think about offloading it and making some money for yourself out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, of course, uh, if you don't want to keep it, but you don't want to sell it, you can also donate it. And uh, again, we did some research, Leslie and I, and one of the options you could do, and maybe that's besides uh, if you have a a military uniform or maybe a military outfit or the medals, you can consider donating to a military museum. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we were doing our quick Google search, we saw the Royal Air Force Museum take things like that, the V&A Museum. And I think what you have to do, if you, you have to send an email or send a contact form saying the kind of things that you've got, and then a curator of the museum will come back to you and see whether or not it's got any value to them. So that's a really cool thing. If you can get your military medals or the military medals of your loved ones into a museum, how cool is that? Yeah, definitely. That's such a good option as well, because so if there's items in your house that are just gathering dust and they have no meaning to you, I would definitely consider uh, donating and spending some time and researching that because how, how wonderful would that be to make sure it goes to a wonderful place and other people can enjoy those medals or uniforms or whatever it is as well. So right, Leslie, anything else to add before you wrap up this episode? 
I don't think so, really. Other than to say, these kinds of things are so, so special. Don't just leave them languishing in a drawer. Do something special with them. Display them. Enjoy them. Pass them on to somebody else who will enjoy them. You know, don't just leave them gathering dust, as Ingrid says, and sitting in a drawer. It's really, really important. Yeah, and I think it's also wonderful to share the stories with family members as well and and keep that family history alive. So that's it for this episode, listeners. We hope you've all enjoyed listening and are inspired to take actions. Have you got a medal or a trophy or something very special lurking in one of your cupboards? And have you been meaning to do something with it or to create a piece of art? Maybe now's the time to get it done. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen today. If you'd like to get more tips and advice, please follow us on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as at Declutter Hub. And we've got a lovely, supportive Facebook group where we chat all things clutter. You can search for the Declutter Hub community. We'd love to see you there. Take a look at members.declutterhub.com to find more about a membership. If you don't want to miss the next weekly episode, subscribe to the Declutter Hub podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher, and it will pop into your notifications each Friday. See you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Check out declutterhub.com for more inspiration, and don't forget to tune in next week.